What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Flutter to showcase your dependency, shared preferences, and inherited widgets. Stuff like shared preferences and inherited widgets are really important terminologies in Flutter. So this video is going to be quite um, wisdomous. If you're new, then please consider subscribing and without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to implement showcase view in the simplest manner. And then we'll implement that on a pre-made and kind of a complicated UI. So I'll simply clone the example repository by writing git clone and paste this link. You can of course find this link in the description below. So the repository is cloned and I've opened it in VS code. This repository is actually the repository that's mentioned by the creator of the dependency on pub.dev. So naturally it also has the complete code for the dependency itself. We are not interested in that at the moment. So in order to run the example app, I'll open up the terminal, navigate to the example folder and execute flutter run. And as the app launches, I'm going to open up the main.dart file present inside of the lib of example folder. The first thing to notice here is this showcase widget. So in order to show the showcase, you would need to place this widget at the very top of the widget tree after material app. And then for the child, we have passed the mail page widget, which returns a scaffold. Actually, it's not mandatory to place the showcase widget right before scaffold. You can even pass showcase widget as body to scaffold. The only thing that you need to be careful about is to make sure that the showcase widget is above the start showcase function. Now, instead of the mail page widget, we have declared five different keys using global key class, each of which will then be assigned to a widget upon which we want the showcase to appear. Coming inside of the build method, notice this line or block of code. This code is basically responsible for starting the showcase as soon as the app is launched. So we wait for a callback known as add post frame callback, which is triggered as soon as the current widget frames are drawn. And after this callback, we simply return showcase widget dot start showcase, which takes a context and a list of keys. After that, there is nothing special. We have a scaffold, safe area, and all that regular UI stuff. What you really need to focus on is this showcase widget. So the showcase widget has three required parameters, which are key, child, and description. So we have provided a key, set a description, and we've also passed the menu icon as a child. Let me just show the UI on the right. So currently we are looking at the menu icon. Now, as you tap on the screen, it jumps on the next key or the next element from the list of keys which we provided to the start showcase function. There we go. So this is key two. It also has a title, description, and some more extra customizations are provided over here. You can just press control space to list out all the properties and customizations that you can provide to the showcase message, such as animation duration, description textile, overlay color, overlay opacity, and much more. All right. So I think you got the basic essence of using showcase view. You just have to make the showcase widget as parent widget, then define some global keys, then pass those keys instead of a start showcase function, and finally assign those keys to the desired widgets. Now let's try to implement something like this with a practical approach on a little bit complex UI, which has multiple widgets and a large code base. On the right side of the screen, you can see the UI that we'll be working on. I've created a video earlier where we make this UI from scratch. So if you're interested, you can check that out as well by simply clicking on the I button when you finish or get bored from this one. So the first thing that we'll do is introduce the showcase widget. Now, where to put it? So last time we placed it inside of a material app widget, but this time I'll place it inside of a scaffold widget, just to prove my point that it is not mandatory to put it in a specific place. So I'll scroll down to the scaffold widget and cut this portion. Then I'll create a new stateful widget and call it home body. And then I'll simply paste the code over here. To make this work, you would need to replace the home body widget with showcase widget and pass home body as a child to the showcase widget. Great. So it's time for us to create some keys. I want a showcase to appear for this option icon. So I'm going to create a global key with name options key. Similarly, I want a showcase for cart indicator, so I'll create a key for that as well. Then for the name of the app, 
for the search bar and then finally for the categories. Now instead of the build method, I'll simply write widgets binding dot instance dot add post frame callback, which returns with a duration. We'll not be making use of that duration, so I'll just pass an underscore over here. Then we need to call showcase widget dot start showcase method. Now I'll pass in the context and the second argument is a list of keys. So for now, we'll just pass a single key, say the options key. After this, we are required to wrap the options icon with a showcase widget and pass this options key there. In order to do so, we would have to pass this options key to the first half widget. Then this first half widget would pass it to custom app bar. And then finally, we would be able to pass it to the required widget. That's just too much work and it's not ideal. You should never do that. Passing a specific information down the widget tree is not a problem up to one or even two levels. But here we would have to pass five different values up to two to three levels down, which is a very bad approach. Therefore, we'll use inherited widgets. Inherited widget is a special widget that is used to propagate data and information down the widget tree and even dynamically reflect the changes in that data without getting the intermediate widgets to involve in this propagation. So I'm going to create a class and name it keys to be inherited, which extends inherited widget. Great. So now we need to override this method called update should notify and I'm going to return true. After that, I'll create a global key called cart indicator key, then categories key, options key, search key, and finally the name key. And this class is immutable. Therefore, we would have to mark all of its properties as final. Now I'll simply initialize these properties instead of the constructor. And I'm also going to create another field of widget type and call it child. After that, we'll just write super child child. Super is simply responsible for calling the constructor of the base class. We're almost done with the inherited widget. The only thing that's left is to create a way via which we could retrieve the information. So we'll create a static method with keys to be inherited return type and name it off. Then it accepts a build context. And from here, we are supposed to return a value of type keys to be inherited. Therefore, we'll write context dot inherit from widget of exact type. And then we need to specify a target type. In this case, it would be keys to be inherited. So here we have simply specified the type of the values that we wish to inherit. Now I'll scroll down to the home body state class where we have specified the entire layout. And now I'm going to wrap the safe area widget with a new widget called keys to be inherited. After that, we just need to pass the keys that we specified. So I'll pass name key for name key, card indicator key for card indicator key and so on. Great. So we are done with the setup. Now you just need to wrap any desired widget with a showcase widget and pass the necessary arguments. So we're going to start off by specifying a showcase for the options icon. So I'll go over to the custom app bar and I'm going to wrap this icon widget with a showcase widget. And for the key, I'll just write keys to be inherited dot off pass in the context dot options key. It's that simple. And then I'll simply provide a description. Moving on, I want to explain about that yellow circle to all the users when they launch the app for the very first time. So I'll come inside of the build gesture method and I'll wrap this container with another widget and call it showcase. Then for the key, we'll simply write keys to be inherited dot off context dot card indicator key. After that, we'll simply provide some description. I also want to display the showcase over categories, title and search bar. So all those widgets are present inside of the first half widget. The first thing that I'll do is I'll come inside of the build method and I'm just going to create a final variable called get keys and we'll simply write keys to be inherited dot off context. Now we'll follow the same procedure. So I'll wrap the title with a showcase widget. And for the key, I'll simply write get keys dot name key and provide some description. All right, so I've skipped a little bit. And as you can see that we have done the same thing again for search bar and the categories widget. 
so it's time for us to launch the app and take a look. As soon as the app launches, the showcase appears and as you tap anywhere on the screen, it jumps to the next showcase widget. Also, if you're wondering that how does it decides the next jump target, it simply loops over this list of keys that we passed earlier. So you could just change the index position of the keys and it would change the order of jump as well. It looks cool, but is it practical just yet? Watch what happens when I reload the application. The showcase appears again. So every time when the user launches the application, or if you call a set state method, this showcase will appear. Or watch what happens if I navigate to another screen. The showcase appears again, and this time it does not even looks good. To deal with this, we'll use something called shared preferences. Shared preferences enable us to store very small amount of information in the form of key value pairs. And this information persists even when the user terminates the application. So I'll go over to the pubspec.yaml file, include the necessary dependency, and sync the project. Then, instead of the build method of homebody widget, I'll create an instance variable of shared preferences class and name it preferences. So there are two operations that you can perform with shared preferences. Either you could save the data in the form of key value pairs using set function, or you could retrieve that data using the get function. I'm going to start off by creating a function called display showcase and mark it as sync. Then I'll initialize the preferences instance variable with the get instance method of shared preferences class. And this returns a future. So we'll wait until we receive the result. Now we need to check whether or not to display the showcase based on the value that we received from the shared preference. So I'll write bool showcase visibility status equals preferences dot and it lists out all the functions that you could use such as get bool, get double, get int to read boolean double or integer values. Then we also have a set bool, set double and set int to save boolean double or integer values. For now, we'll use the get bool method. And all these get functions accept an argument that is the key in the key value pair. For the key, I'll simply write display showcase. Currently, we haven't stored any data or any value for this key, so it'll probably return null, which means that the user is launching the app for the very first time. Therefore, we need to show the showcase. So I'll write if showcase visibility status equal equals null return true. Then outside of this if, we'll return false. The work is not done yet. We'll come back and see what's missing. For now, I'll just call the display showcase method and use the then callback to receive a boolean value called status. And if status is true, then I'll simply copy this code and paste it over here. Now you are free to remove this add post frame callback method. Let's go back to the display showcase method and try to figure out what's missing. So right now, the showcase visibility status will always be null. Therefore, we would need to set some value for the display showcase key. And we can do so by simply accessing the setBool method inside of the if block. The set functions take two arguments, one for the key and the other for the value. So for the key, you want to write display showcase and for the value, I'm just going to pass false. In this case, you could either pass true or false in the place of value because our main focus is on defining the key value pair with the key display showcase. And we're done. I'm going to hot restart the app once again. And now at first, the showcase is displayed. But when I move to the next screen, showcase does not appear. Also, let's say that your user has seen the showcase once. And now when he quits and relaunches the application, he's not annoyed by looking at the showcase once again. So that's it for this video. I talked about showcase widget, inherited widget, and shared preferences, all of which are really important and useful topics. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share it in your circle or maybe online groups or with the people who you think would find it helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.